chapter five of the forbidden way by george gibbs this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by tony oliva diners out when the visitors had gone camilla disappeared in the direction of her own apartment the thought of being alone with jeff was intolerable to her she must have time to think to wash away the traces of her emotion which she was sure even the shadows of the drawing-room could hardly have hidden from the sharp eyes of her elderly guest her husband had given no indication of having noticed anything unusual in her appearance but she knew that he would not have let her discover it if he had she breathed a sigh of relief when the door was closed behind her dismissed her maid and slipping into a comfortable garment threw herself face downward on a couch and buried her head in its pillow out of the disordered tangle of her thoughts one idea gradually evolved that she must not see cortland bent again she could not plan just how she was to avoid him for general bent had already invited them to dine at his house and she knew that she must go for jeff's sake no matter what it cost her she could not blame cortland as much as she blamed herself for she realized now how vulnerable she had been even from the first moment when she had entered the room bravely assuring herself that she cared for him no longer the revelation of her husband's part in the lease of the lone tree had shocked her but even her abomination of his brutal method of consummating the business was lost in the discovery of her own culpability before to-day it had not seemed so great a sin to hold another man's image in her heart but the disclosure of her secret had robbed it of some of the dignity of seclusion the one thing that had redeemed her in the past had been the soft pains of self-abnegation and now she had not even those to comfort her the revelation to court had even made their relation a little brutal she fought with herself silently proposing subterfuge and sophistry then dragging her pitiful treasure forth remorselessly under the garish light of conscience she could not understand the change that cortland's presence made for what yesterday had been only unduteous to-day was a sin what then had been a balm was now a poison morning brought regeneration the sun shone brightly through her yellow curtains and her maid brought with her breakfast tray a note from the contrite cortland forgive me camilla forgive me call me selfish unreasonable cruel anything you like but don't tell me i shall not see you again you will find me a model of all the virtues gladys is calling on you to-day you are coming to the dinner aren't you i will be there in a corner somewhere but i won't bother you the night has brought me patience forgive me c camilla slipped the note among her laces and when jeff looked in to bring her the invitation which had arrived in the morning mail to dine at the house of cornelius bent she presented a fair face and joyous countenance general bent's dinners had a way of being ponderous like himself from soup to coffee the victuals were rich and highly seasoned the wines full-bodied his dishes were heavy his silver service massive his furniture capacious the impression of solidity was further enhanced by the thick oak panelling the wide fireplace and the sumptuous candelabra many if not all of these adjectives might readily be applied to his men-servants who had been so long in his employ that the essentials of their surroundings had been seared into their souls the bent regime was their religion the general its high priest 
and their offices components of a ceremony which they observed with impressive dignity and sedate fervor as a rule the personality of the general's guests did nothing to detract from the impression of opulence they were the heavy men of affairs the big men of clubdom of business of religion of politics camilla had been warned of what she must expect but it was with feelings of trepidation not far removed from awe that she and jeff got down from their taxi under the glow of the porte cochere before the wide portal of the great house in madison avenue her last admonition to her husband in the cab had been jeff don't shuffle your feet and don't say ma'am and keep your hands out of your pockets if you can't think of anything to say don't say it ray only laughed he was very much at his ease for he had convinced himself downtown that the doors of the bent establishment would not have swung so wide had the general not found that ray's holdings and influence in the west were matters which some day he would have to reckon with when they arrived they were pleased to discover that there were to be young people among the guests as well as old three stout florid gentlemen members of the directorate of the amalgamated reduction company whom jeff had met downtown with their wives and mr and mrs worthington rumson lent their share to the dignity the general required but there was a leaven of a younger set in gladys his daughter mrs bent had died many years before Cortland, his son and some others most of the guests were already in the drawing-room when the rays were announced and camilla entered a little uncertainly her eyes sparkling seeking her hostess there was a subdued masculine murmur of approval a raising of lorgnons to aged feminine noses a general movement of appreciation camilla was radiant Cortland bent came forward from his corner slowly drinking in her loveliness with his eyes she was gowned in white and wore no ornaments the slenderness which all women ate was hers without asking her ruddy hair at the last moment had resisted the arts of the hairdresser and so she wore it as she had always done in a heavy coil like a rope of flame if she had been pale as she entered the blood now flowed quickly almost too quickly to be fashionable suffusing her face and gently warming her splendid throat and shoulders am i late she asked i'm so sorry will you forgive me you're not late said her hostess awfully glad we're bountifully repaid put in general bent gallantly as he came forward i'm sure you're quite worth waiting for i've been telling new york for years it had better keep its eyes on the west now i must warn its women how are you ray you know warrington and janey let me present you ray the baroness charny jeff felt himself appraised civilly you are the mr ray she asked him the rich mr ray jeff flushed with pleasure nothing ever tickled him more than a reference to his possessions i'm ray from colorado and you you know i've never seen a real live baroness before so don't mind if i look at you a little you see we never have anybody like you out our way i don't mind in the least she said with a slight accent what did you think a baroness ought to look like i had a kind of an idea she was uh, stoutish wore a crown and uh, sat in a big chair all day ordering people around i'm afraid you read fairy stories i don't own a crown and i might order people all day but nobody would pay the least attention to me what a pity he said soberly his ingenuousness was refreshing you know mr a baronesses aren't any more important nowadays than anybody else 
the only barons worth while in the world are the coal barons the wheat barons the gold barons like you and then did you know that you were to take me in are you glad of course with a vague attempt at gallantry i'd take you anywhere and be proud to then give me your arm she laughed and they followed the others in to dinner ray's other neighbor was mrs rumson his host's sister camilla had related many tales of her social prowess and she was really the only person at the table of whom jeff stood the least in awe mrs rumson's nose was aquiline like her brother's her eyebrows high and slightly arched her eyes small and rather close together as though nature had intended them for a short but concentrated vision she held her head very erect and from her great height was enabled without pretence to look down on all lesser things Cortland had described her as a grenadier and as ray realized that the moment when he must talk to her was inevitably approaching he lost some faith in his moods and tenses mr ray she began in a tone which was clearly to be heard the length of the table you have a handsome wife yes ma'am he drawled i'm glad you think so mrs rumson a woman with her looks and your money could have the world at her feet if she wished yes i've told her the same thing but i don't think she likes a fuss why i sent up a whole carload of hats all colors with plumes and things but she wouldn't have one of them the old lady's deep wrinkles relaxed and diamonds he went on she's got half a peck but i can't get her to put them on mrs rumson did not reply only examined him with her small eyes through her lorgnon you know mr ray ever since you came into the room you have been a puzzle to me your features resemble those of someone i have known years ago someone i have known intimately curious i can't have you ever been west oh yes uh, were your people i have no people mrs rumson he said with a quick air of finality oh she still looked at him wonderingly i beg your pardon then she went on calmly you really interest me a great deal i have seen westerners in new york before but you're different uh, i mean she added the cut of your nose the lines of your chin the set of your head on your shoulders i hope you'll forgive an old woman's curiosity jeff bowed politely i'm very much flattered mrs rumson you and my brother have business interests in common yes i've a mine a chain of mines and property interests including a control of the denver and western railroad she laid a hand impressively on his arm hold them take my advice and hold them i know it is a great temptation to extend your control to be a big man east and west but don't try it by weakening what you have other men have come here to set the hudson afire some of them have done it too mrs rumson she shrugged what is the use you have an empire of your own stay at home develop it wouldn't you rather be first in mantua than second in rome i i'm afraid i don't just take you i mean wouldn't you rather be an emperor among your own people than fetch and carry as so many others are doing for wall street that's just the point only the boot is on the other leg wall street needs the west wall street doesn't think so it's away behind the times those people downtown are so stuck on themselves that they think the whole country is stooping with its ear to the ground listening to what they're doing why mrs rumson there are men in the west big men too who think wall street is a joke funny isn't it 
wall street doesn't seem to know that millions of acres of corn of wheat and potatoes keep growing just the same those things don't wait to hear what wall street thinks only god almighty can make em stop growing and as long as they grow we don't bother much she smiled approvingly then why do you care oh i'm a kind of missionary these people downtown are heathen critters they're so ignorant about their own country it almost makes me ashamed to talk to them the last vestige of the grenadier aspect in mrs rumson had vanished and her face dissolved in smiles heathens they are she laughed delightedly critters yes critters too splendid have you told cornelius my brother that ray's truffles stuck in his throat and he gasped good god ma'am no you won't tell him will you i'd like to she chuckled but i won't jeff laughed i'm afraid i've put my foot in it i'm apt to i'm rather a raw product whatever you do mr ray don't change you're positively refreshing anybody can learn to be good form it's as simple as a b c if it wasn't easy there wouldn't be so many people practicing it people in the shops even adopt our adjectives before they're well out of their mouths hats are smart when in earlier days they were simply becoming gowns are fetching or stunning that were once merely pretty let a fashionable englishman wear a short coat with a high hat to the horse show and every popinjay in town will be doing the same thing in a week if you're a raw product remain so by all means raw products are so much more appetizing than half-baked ones i don't think there's any way to make me any different mrs rumson he laughed even if i wanted to be people will have to take me as i am your brother has been kind it seems as if he had a broader view of our people than most of the others don't be too sure they're all tarred with the same stick it's a maxim of mine never to put my trust in any person or thing below twenty-third street the farther downtown you go the deeper the villainy you'll find all new yorkers much the same out of business hours they are persons of the most exemplary habits good fathers vestrymen in churches excellent hosts in business she held up her hands in mock horror oh i know ray chuckled but i'm not afraid i'm something of a wolf myself your brother needs me more than i need him i think we'll get along you have everything you want take my advice and keep your money in the west thanks but i like new york and i don't want to be idle besides there's camilla mrs ray you know yes i see i can't blame her no woman with her looks wants to waste them on mountain scenery i must know her better and you she must let me call on her i'm giving a ball later do you think you could come and the great lady turned to her dinner partner the baroness too was amiable it was her first visit to america her husband was an attache of an embassy in washington she had not yet been in the west were all the men big as mr ray was she had a charming faculty of injecting the personal note into her questions and before he was aware of it ray found himself well launched in a description of his country the mountains the plains the cowboys she had never heard of cowboys what were they little cows jeff caught a warning look from camilla across the table which softened his laughter he explained and the baroness joined in the merriment then he told her that he had been for years a cowpuncher down in arizona and new mexico before he went into business described the round-up the grub wagon and told her of a brush with some yaqui indians who were on the warpath when he began the other people stopped talking and listened jeff was in his element and without embarrassment finished his story amid plaudits camilla listening timidly was forced to admit that his domination 
of the table was complete the conversation became general a thing which rarely happened at the bent dinners and jeff discovered himself the centre of attention almost unconsciously he found himself addressing most of his remarks to a lady opposite who had listened and questioned with an unusual show of interest when the ices were passed he turned to mrs rumson and questioned haven't you met her and then across the table rita you haven't met mr ray mrs Chain. End of chapter 5